So we've got carbon versus alloy. Carbon versus alloy. If you got, I mean, most of my audience aren't, don't have the disposable income that I have. I'm earning doctor's wages. I'm making YouTube videos and selling ebook. I have disposable income. I've got no kids. I've got no debt. No, nothing. I can for whatever I want when it comes to cycling. If I snap my bike in half, it's inconvenient for me. It's not. <gasps> Average person doesn't. Am I, am I a viewer? That's not the demographic. I would say for most people, alloy is a better option because alloy you can drop it. You can drop it if you have carbon bars, right? And your bike at the cafe leans over the ground and it lands boom hard in the ground. I recommend, and most manufacturers specialize 3T Triple T, they would recommend you replace those carbon bars even though there's no physical damage under the eye. Carbon does not like getting hit. Doing lots of getting hit. Fucking bang. Um, so I would say alloy is a lot better. Most pros don't run carbon bars for that very reason. Carbon is just very brittle. It's very lightweight, it's a fantastic material. It can be fixed. If you if you snap your derail into your spokes and crack your frame, you can fix that for a couple hundred bucks. Aluminium you can't, you've got to recycle it. So there's pros and cons to carbon, but for the average person, I would recommend 90% of people ride alloy frames, alloy bars, alloy stem, alloy seat posts, etc. If you're over 70 kilos, I would recommend alloy seat posts, alloy bars, alloy stem for sure. And if you're new to riding, you're gonna have those noob crashes, man. Everyone has them. Freely rode an alloy bike for 2008. She rode an alloy bike for five years. She's got carbon bikes now, but she's had her noob crashes, the silly crashes or where you park your bike and you, like this morning, this, this girl had a $10,000 Cervelo leaned precariously against this rock. And I'm like, oh, you're playing with the devil there. She's like, oh, no, it's solid as, mate. She's a total noob, just total noob, you know, gearing's all wrong for the heels, total noob, but she knows better. Um, people just learn the hard way sometimes, don't they? And that was the same rock, I remember this guy turned up, it's the top of Norton Summit drink station there. I remember a few years ago, this guy had his brand new S-Works, almost first ride, just like crisp, brand new out of the box. And he's got leaned up, and I said, oh, you know, just watch the wind, it's a bit gusty today. And he's, he just sort of didn't even say nothing. And then, sure enough, I fucking wish I had the GoPro, and the wind came, S-Works, <laughs> All in this fucking seat stay. I don't say nothing. And he's just like, fuck. <laughs> Some people in life learn the fucking hard way. I like to learn from other people's mistakes. So if someone gives me a tip, I'm like, mm, it makes make sense. Versus ego, like, you're wrong. It's a fine line, isn't it? Anyway, so I would recommend carbon for people with extra money. It doesn't make any difference in performance as well. Like, I've got, I've got multiple pairs of zip wheels, later stuff, and uh, lightweights. You know, it doesn't really make any difference, man. We're talking about a couple of seconds up a 10 minute climb. Two or three, four seconds, maybe max. What matters is how much power you can put out. So I would recommend the best money you can spend is get a power meter, get a little Garmin, get a power meter. So if your choice between alloy bike versus carbon, I'd say go the alloy version, because it's going to be cheaper, because carbon just it sells more money, because people want, oh, it's carbon, must be better, it's not better. Uh, and they buy that thinking they're going to be better riders, but nah, <laughs> doesn't make shit or difference. My fastest times at Norton Summit, I've done that video, man, the $500 Reed versus my top of the line carbon bike with lightweights, there's fuck all in it. If you're at the point in Australia and every second counts, then yeah, go for every gram, it's going to cost you, but you're better off, man, getting a power meter, 100%. Get a power meter, alloy bike, alloy rims, etc. a lot more durable. Carbon, it can be repaired, it fractures easier, I'd stay away from carbon bars, Unless you're a seasoned rider and you know how to park your bike, you know how to crash, and you, you don't have the noob crashes. So otherwise, be prepared to be throwing a lot of stuff out and paying big coin. But if you're going, if, you've got, if money's not an option, then blast it, mate. Get a, get a $10,000 bike, just blast it, whatever's. Otherwise, the $1,500 road bike, $2,000 road bike these days in 2015, 2016, is really, really good. Hard. There's not much in between a $2,000 road bike and a $10,000 road bike. Other than paint job looks and a bit of wank factor at the cafe. There you go, the, the news that not many people are going to tell you. Because I'm not selling your bikes, am I? I'm, selling you, I'm, I'm not selling nothing, I'm telling the truth. I shall sell an ebook, but get a copy of my ebook. Actually, my cycling buyer's guide talks about it in more detail. So, you're going to buy something, <laughs> that book is going to save you a lot of hassle. Get a power meter above all, man. I, I'd put a, I've got a $500 bike, my Reed Osprey. It's got a fucking $1,000 power meter on it, alright? You know, the power meter is twice the value of the bike. 
but I'm still flogging motherfuckers on $15,000 Pinarellos because it's not about the bike, it's more about the motor. So, bottom line, a bike that fits you from a good shop that can help you get fitted up properly, proper gearing, like at least a 34, 32 compact ratios, and a power meter. There you go, smash it. And lastly, people might go, hang on, you're a fucking hypocrite, Duran Rodder. You've got all these carbon bling bikes, what are you talking about? If you don't need carbon, why you got it? <laughs> Mate, I don't have kids, what the fuck else am I going to spend my money on? 